Hello, it's Monday, Thursday, and I've prepared a little devotion for all of you. I am Tom Meyer, interim pastor at Christ the Cornerstone Lutheran Church in the Mira Mesa part of San Diego, and also at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Poway, California. We're gathering together on this Monday, Thursday. Monday is kind of a strange word. It, it's a Latin word that really means commandment, and Jesus, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. And so Jesus is showing that in the events of Monday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday has kind of two parts to it. The first part is Jesus instituting Holy Communion as he gives it to his disciples and all the foot washing and everything that's involved in that. But the second part is Gethsemane, where Jesus goes there and he prays to his Father. And for this devotion, I would like to focus in on the second part. Have you ever been in one of those really, really, really thick fogs? You know, the kind of fog where you just can't see and you almost stick your hand in front of you and you think it would disappear? I've had several of those experiences where, where it would just, you just wonder if you're just lost. And one time I just felt so alone because it just didn't seem like there was anybody else around in the entire world. There I was on a road out in the country with nobody near me, nobody else. I couldn't see any lights. I couldn't see anything. And there I was all by myself. Now the Bible doesn't give us the picture of what it was like at Gethsemane and whether it was a foggy night there or not. But I guess in my mind, I kind of imagine that it is. That's just my kind of creation. That as Jesus goes into the garden, he's going into this foggy situation because the whole story reflects a little bit on his aloneness. Let me read it to you from Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 32. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Much more, once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he found, again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. There's a picture of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, and maybe you've seen it. It's rather popular, and it's been on bulletin covers, and people use it a lot as illustrations. It shows picture in this white, pristine robe, kneeling at this big rock with his hands folded with kind of a serene look on his face as he's kind of looking up into heaven. I think the artist that drew that did not read Mark 14, because Mark 14 paints the picture in black. He paints it dark. And he says that Jesus, in one of the translations says, he threw himself on the ground. Not that he kneeled down by this rock and folded his hands and had this serene look, but he threw himself onto the ground. That's the kind of anguish that Jesus went through. That's the kind of thing that he experienced as he, as he took on himself all the sins of the world. And if ever we see Jesus Christ more human, this is it. 
This is where we see his true humanity as he experienced the pain, the anguish of having the sin all put on him. And as he experiences all of this, he cries out to his father and says, if there's another way, if there's another choice. As we go through our own struggles, as we want to say sometimes, if there's another way, if there's another choice, maybe we need to come back to Jesus and see his humanness because as we experience our own pains, that's probably as much as we experience his humanness and ours together. He came. He came into our world to be a human being, to die on the cross, to take our place there. And we know the rest of the story. He died there on the cross, but just a few days later, he celebrated the Easter, the resurrection, which we too will celebrate in a couple days. We come to Jesus and we see his pain for us because of his love for us. And if you experience the frustrations, the agony, the anguish, the difficulties, the pain, just be assured. Be assured that he knows. Jesus knows what it's like because he experienced it too. And he's there by your side. He's there with you. And he will never leave you. He will never abandon you. He will never forsake you. So as we come together this Monday, Thursday, and this strange experience, not being able to celebrate communion, not being able to gather in our churches, but we experience the love that God has for us, that Jesus Christ came to be our Savior, to experience the pain and the anguish of our sin, so that you and I can experience the forgiveness, the holiness that he has for us. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life that you give to us, for the life that's able to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ, who came, who was crucified, but who also rose from the dead. But dear Lord, as we see Jesus' anguish in the garden, help us to always recognize that, that he was one of us. He knows what it's like to experience pain, to have anguish, to be in a situation like that. And he's there with us now all the time and says, don't be afraid. I am with you and I will be with you forever. We pray as always in his name. Amen.